So, um, oh, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about the the trading exercise. I, I hope you all enjoy that little game we had. Now, uh, just for you to now that we've done the that trading game, um, I want to just say a few words to deepen your understanding, so you you know more, a little bit more how markets really function. Uh, now, in the in the game that trading exercise we did, which was called IN1, and there is a document in Blackboard that you can read. So there are basically there is an index index A that you can buy and sell. There is an index B, and there is a futures on index B. And the way A and B indices are related is that they actually they have the same uh, expected return and the same. They basically have the uh, uh, the same distribution, but that doesn't mean the values will come out the same. They can be very very different. Okay, but if you if you were to do it a million times, law of large numbers, you will find that there is some kind of convergence. But we only just ran eight trials, so of course the numbers can be very different. And then the futures, of course, is related to to index B. Um, this kind of resembles. What does it resemble? Um, just imagine. Let's say you you have um, you look at the German the German stock market. Okay. The Deutsche Börse, uh, so the German stock market. Now the German, the German stock market will have a very, very liquid, tradable index, uh, stock market index, which is the DAX, of course. Okay. Now, the DAX would have a futures contract too. Okay, DAX futures. And let's say you pick another market. Now I can't. Let's just say let's just say Turkey. Now I got nothing against Turkey, and they they probably have well you no know, Turkey may, maybe um. Let's pick some somewhere even more remote than Turkey. Okay, uh, <clears throat> what's a good example? Lithuania. So this is in Eastern Europe. Now, I assume that they have a stock market and they have a stock index, but they may or may not have a futures contract. Let's just say they don't. Okay, they might do. Let's just say they don't. And then the Lithuanian market is very, very closely related to the German market because it's just right next door. And their economies are, you know, closely linked together. So this is the kind of situation you were facing last night, in a way. Okay, uh, you're trading. You have an exposure in uh, in, in market A, and uh, there's no futures contract. And um, you're wondering, yeah, why? Why then? Why should I bother with this? Okay. Well, in real life. The reason you would bother is precisely because there are a lot of inefficiencies. Uh, so there are arbitrage opportunities, mispricing. The returns are, are, are sometimes higher, although here we are sharing the same distribution. Okay, so that is kind of like an analogy. Now, so I know that it, it was confusing. So on the uh, on the left hand side, you've got you got uh, bids and R's. So you got index A, and there will be a a price. Let's say nine thousand, and somebody would be happy to buy a hundred at nine thousand, and the R's might be the, the prices were really flying wild, okay, everywhere. So maybe eleven thousand. Someone happy to sell two hundred, something like that. Okay, and then on the right hand side, as you recall, 
And this was confusing as well. You have, uh, what, 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 what buttons did you have? Um, submit to bid, I think was one of them. And then submit to ask, am I right? Yeah. And then you have another two buttons. Um, yeah, sell, thank you. Sell to bid and buy from ask. Now, this is the, my, my, what was that? You drop something? Is it, is it okay? What is the brand? <laughs> what make is it? Your phone. What is the brand of your phone? Huh? Oppo. <laughs> It'll be okay. Yeah. Um, so, in essence, what these are, these are actually market orders. You know, as I told you last time. So when, when you hit a button here, sell to bid, whatever is available at this price, you're gonna hit that. You know, you remember the, the vocabulary, you hit the bid, don't ask me why they say this, okay? And you lift someone's offer. Why isn't it the other way around? Why don't you lift the bid and hit the, I don't know, okay? But this is how traders talk. So when you say sell to bid, basically you are selling, but you don't get to sell at this price. You sell at someone's bid price. You, when you are you when you are trading with market orders, you are a price taker, and you are on the worst side of the market, but you get to trade right away. Okay, so that's the thing to remember. Uh, now you can submit to bid. Now these are what we call limit orders. Limit orders. So if this is the only thing that is available now in the market and you want to buy cheaper, so maybe you submit at 8,800 and you submit, you know, whatever, 200. And then you just queue up like that, okay? Now, so these are, so now you are, so basically on this side are all the, you know, the price takers are on one side and the price makers are all on the other side. And what happens in the real market is that you've got these bids and offers all lined up. So let's say right now the market is at, is at precisely 9,000. And that is the best, that is the best bid. So some people are happy to buy at 9,000 and then you just submitted one at 8,800. Maybe somebody is happy to buy at 8,700, buy, okay? Now, the lower the price, so you're gonna just join a queue, maybe 8,500, 88, whatever, okay? You just join the queue. Now on the other side, maybe somebody would offer uh, 9,010, okay? So they wanna sell at this price. Now when you are selling, of course you wanna sell as high as possible. So, but yeah, you can, you can say, I want to sell it at a million. You can put that there is your freedom, but no one is going to care. Okay. So this will go up 9,770, maybe 9,200. Okay. Now behind all these, there are quantities as well. I haven't put them there, but, and it's actually when the two are meeting, that is when you have a market equilibrium. Okay. Here. 
So right now, right now, what you will see is a market that is 9,000 bid, 9,010 offer. And that is what will show on the screen in real life. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Now, this is a, you know, you, you can call this, so this is a bunch of, this is a collection of limit orders. And you can, you can call it a limit order book if you want. Okay, now, if that's all there is, it could stay like this, frozen in time, and no one does anything. It can just stay like this forever. Okay, now, so why do markets actually move? Markets move because there are people who would come in and actually make market orders as price takers, okay? So somebody would come in and say, okay, never mind. Okay, forget it. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to buy. I buy at 9,010. Now, this price is gone. And then the next guy comes along and say, oh, no, I can't even buy this price. I better buy this one. And then this price is gone. And then the, and then the third guy comes along. Oh, oh no, it's getting more exp expensive. So I better buy here, okay? So all these get taken out when people are buying. And the same is also true in, a, in the falling market. When all the, all the best bids are taken out and the, and the price keeps falling. Are you with me? Is it okay with everyone? Yeah, that's roughly how, how, a market, how the market works, okay? Um, so I, I want to just, ex so that's really what was happening last night. Um, and uh, okay, so now let me let me get on with uh, the, some of the stuff I want to share with you today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, calendar spread trading because this is uh, an integral part of uh, trading the, the futures market. Um, I want to talk about option market inputs and I want to talk about what is actually what is really in an option price okay uh, these slides are already on blackboard okay and um, just to by the way this is not this is not correct uh, I need to update this um, now what's new is uh, you should have seen a, a, new, a new tutorial allocation list is already on Blackboard. I don't mind to show you. And it has your team IDs. It's been a lot of versions. So I've split you guys up just to be efficient. I did it for you. So you get to work with different people. Um, so I split you guys up into teams. There are 48 people in this class, which is a good number. And I've divided you guys up into eight teams of six people each. Okay. And uh, for the for the project purpose. Um, so the groups are already formed. Um, you do have an assignment that you need to hand in. I'm sorry about the confusion last night, but just submit your hard copy after you scan it to blackboard please okay we'd like you guys to to do your to do it in a handwritten form the old-fashioned way okay um otherwise it is possible just to do a save as and then you suddenly use somebody else's work i know you won't do it okay but we don't want that to happen uh next lecture and tutorial um i'll come to that in a minute okay now the final exam Two thousand and nineteen. I have to get used to that. I still, I still think I'm in two thousand and eighteen. It's going to take me a little while to get used to it. Um, unfortunately, guys, I um, I'm not available uh, next Saturday. So my apologies for that. And. 
if in doubt, this calendar is correct as we speak, okay? Um, now, I need to actually combine. So I was I will see T2 on the 10th of January, which is actually a Thursday. And then I see them the Thursday after that. Now, I'm going to have to combine the two classes. I, I understand, I am fully aware that there are some students who can't make it to a Thursday session, okay? So I'm going to make a, a recording available. And if you have any problems or questions, please do not hesitate to let me know, okay? Um, I can't think of another way to do this because this term has so many holidays and sometimes I need to be absent and I, you know, I don't want to drag you in on a Sunday either, okay? Uh, but this is the calendar as we, so if you are able to come on January 17, please do so, okay? If you can't, just let me know and I won't count it against you. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could actually run a separate session on that day, but if we combine it, I, I probably will, will talk to you guys for longer, okay. Um, okay, so next week we are back in a classroom setting for the lecture. And the week after is actually the midterm, which isn't that far away. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, Sin Ming has asked me to contribute a couple of questions to the midterm uh, based on what we have been discussing in tutorials. Now, we haven't really talked that much. Um, I haven't given you any formulas. There's I haven't shown you any heavy stochastic calculus, nothing like that, okay? Uh, but you just think about what we've been discussing, you know, on different order types. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you a bit more about trading futures. Uh, next time, uh, you know, th there's one more uh, tutorial before the midterm. Um, I will just I will then you know do a, a quick review with you uh, of things that we have covered so far, and I'll talk a little bit more about you know option structures, straddles and strangles and spreads and so on. Okay, but that's for next time. Um, now for today, uh, there is one more thing I want to. Uh, draw to your attention. So as you know, in this spec that was released yesterday, um, so we are going to do these presentations on February 22nd, and the topic is derivative disasters, cleanups, and fat fingers. Now, cleanup means it doesn't mean there's something on the floor and you, you clean it up. Clean up in, in finance means basically you did such a big trade, you made a lot of money, or you go to the casino and I really cleaned up last night. Okay? It doesn't mean you clean the casino. It means you made a lot of money. So this uh, little project is about a lot of high-profile derivative incidents, if you like, uh, some of them, people lost a lot of money. In some other ones, people made a lot of money, okay? And then some other, uh, they are just accidents, and I call them fat fingers. And we have a number here. Um, and so these are the disasters. So like I said, if you want to think of another one, uh, do let us know. I was telling... 
the tutorial um, two days ago that in fact there was another one that, that, that perhaps we could have put in, which we haven't. It's a German company called um, Metro Gesellschaft, I think something like that. I don't speak German, okay? I'm pretending. Now, th this actually was a very famous uh, incident that happened, whoops, back in the, I think it was the 1990s. Metro Kishoshaft and its hedging problems. Uh, it got a lot of attention at the time, although the case is not that new, uh, people still talk about it. Uh, they were trading in oil, trading the long end and the short end of oil futures, and things went seriously wrong, and they had such a big position, they ended up losing a lot of money. How to pronounce it? Yeah, how? Okay, just tell me. So now I'm going to show you Let's start. Metallurgy Okay. Metallurgy Okay, I get it. Okay. Metallurgy show. Yeah. Germans. German give me a headache. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so there are these um, incidents, and I notice that some of you already have picked your choices. And um, this morning I was uh, looking at it, and I can happily tell you, um, I can I can happily confirm six of them. And these are the ones that I, now I haven't heard from anyone from group two, one, two, three, four, or group six, okay? Now, the reason they are in this funny order is that this is the order in which I received your emails, okay? So you guys can go ahead and do this if you want to, okay? Is everyone okay with that? Yeah, feel free to take a picture if you want to. Uh, but like I said, I haven't heard from group two, I haven't heard from group six, so unfortunately, um, you you won't. You have to work on another topic. But there are so many. I think students really love to talk about things that go wrong. They love to talk about disasters and uh, uh, and point out how someone messed up. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. All right, so that's what I can tell you so far. Um, oh, you need to take a picture? Go ahead. Okay. Now, I want to uh, just say a few words about um, what we call calendar spread, which is uh, something that you can do with futures contract. It's not just limited to futures, but you can do it in options too. Um, and this is sometimes known as trading the futures role or kind of futures calendar spread. Now, as you know, now I'm not going to use continuous discounting. So I want to make it really simple because my idea here is not to give you the, the, uh, the theoretical treatment or the, the formulation. So we already do that in class. Um, I want to point out, you know, I, I think the difference between you know, if ever someone asks you in an interview, okay, I think the difference between a a quant or 
a theorist, okay? The difference between a quant and a trader is that the quant needs to know very, very well where the price is now, okay? The trader needs to know where the price is going. So the trader needs to know how the price can evolve. Now, traders actually can can be very quanty, okay? But their focus would never be, you know, getting the last subscript of the partial differentiation, uh, differential equation, correct? So that's not their focus. Their focus is more commercial, more related to markets and how prices can change from one day to the next. And this is a good example of taking that idea of pricing a simple futures contract and then really thinking about it and thinking how the price can change and how you can take advantage of it, okay? But for, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna keep it real simple. So the futures price of anything, so here we use a stock as an example, is just the stock price plus the interest cost minus the dividend. So F is equal to SID, but the D has a minus sign in front of it. You guys are all okay with that, right? I can't get it any simpler than this, okay? Um, this is simply a, like I've said, you know, many, many times, it's a, uh, it's a cost of carry argument. So the futures price is equal to whatever the price is now together with the uh, net hedging cost or net funding costs that I am going to incur if I trade with you. So you want to buy this in, in two months. So I have to turn around, I borrow some money and I pay an interest, but I may or may not receive a dividend. So my net uh, funding cost, or sometimes called net cost of carry, net cost of carry, excuse me a minute. Hello? Hi, good morning. Sorry, I, I'm in a class. I'm in a class. Okay. Uh, so now, if you are long a calendar spread, uh, you can go short as well. But if you are long a calendar spread or you're long the futures row, then you are long the long expiry and short the short expiry. Now, it will become clear to you in a moment. Um, let's say there are two futures contracts, okay? And the first one matures in one month, and the second one matures in two months. Two months from now, okay? And uh, let's just say, oh, I actually want these to be subscripted. I want to put subscripts on these. So you have two futures contract. One that will mature one month from now or 30 days. And the other one will mature 60 days from now. And let's just say that interest rate is currently 12%. Now notice I said 12% per annum. So interest rates are always quoted on a an, on an annual basis, okay? And there is a dividend that will be paid in 45 days. Now, I put expected expected to be $1.50, okay? Now, this is a key thing to to I want to uh, impress upon you. When you look at a formula like this, and you just say F is equal to SID, you say, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. So I get the spot price, I get the interest rate, I get the dividend. 
you got to think a bit harder. Where do these values come from? Now, price is price. That's that's easy. Interest rate is interest rate. Now, D actually is more subtle than you think. The dividend, if you are now here, this is one month, this is two months, this is now, this is where you are, and I simply tell you there will be a dividend payment. Now, you know the date, because dates are fixed, but Maybe you actually don't know how much will be paid because they haven't announced it yet. They don't announce it so, so far in advance. So what do you do in that case? And this is a problem that you, you frequently will come across, okay? Uh, what you do is you guess, okay? Or the market is guessing, if you like. The market is making a guess. And when you when you log on to a trading platform and you see the spot price of something and you see the interest rate, which are very easy to find, and you see a futures price, that means the market already made a best guess as to what D should be. Are you with me there? This is an important point because I'm going to pick, I'm going to keep coming back to it in the next 15 minutes. Is everyone okay with that? So the, the, the point is when you are trading futures contracts or options, okay, frequently the dividend is unknown. But that's not a problem because the market will have a view on that. Now, where do they get these numbers from? For example, if you simply go to, um, oh, look at that environmentally friendly uh, <laughs> let's look at um, do you feel better now yes <laughs> everyone likes the green color so if you look at Apple for instance all right you click on any website Bloomberg Reuters Finviz market watch there's a dividend yield down here 1.97 now this is historical, all right? But you know what? It's better than nothing. It doesn't mean you have to agree with it, okay? Uh, but the market is probably using something based on uh, previous uh, history because companies, as much as they like, would try very, very hard to maintain a constant dividend payout ratio as much as they can. They don't want to mess that up. They want investors to have confidence on a stable income and a stable payout policy. So let's say you, you, you do something like that, but in any case, it is still a guess, okay? That's the whole point. So you expect that there'll be a uh, dividend in 45 days, okay? of $1.50, okay? Now, here is when things get interesting. So I said that F is equal to S plus I minus D, okay? I'm sorry I'm not using the continuous compounding, but for this simple demonstration, I, I, I think it's easier for you to understand if I just do it like this, okay? So the one month contract will be priced uh, as S plus the one month interest, which happens to be 1%, by the way, 1%, because I said it's 12% per annum. So 12% divided by 12 is 1%. So this one will be 2%. And then this is the price of the uh, contract maturing in two months. Are you with me? Everyone okay so far? Now, what is D1M? So if this is the time now, this is one, this is one month, 
this is two months. Now D1M is whatever dividend gets paid in this period. We don't have one. So D1M is actually equal to zero, okay? Because there's a payment here, as I said, okay? So D2M is probably going to be a dollar fifty. Now, the futures market will price it like this. So they know that after the uh, dividend is paid, so I'm saying here is 45 days, okay? So after 45 days, the price will drop. Now, I said long futures roll means you long, you buy the long expiry, you buy the two month and you sell the one month. So if you long the futures roll, you long the two month and you short the one month. The end result is if you have F2M minus F1M, which is this one minus this one, which is this one minus this one, which is this one minus this one, which is this. Do you see that? Yeah? Everyone's still okay? Now, first of all, first of all, the interest rates don't really change all that much. So it's not, the interest rate here is a supporting actor. I mean, they can change. They can change. So I said that previously, I, I said that interest rate was 12%. So what I meant by that was the one month interest rate is 12% and the two month interest rate per, per annum, okay, per annum. And the two month interest rate is also 12%. Now they don't have to be, you can get a yield curve, you can even for very, very short maturity. So maybe the two month is 17%, whatever, okay? But that's not really the main consideration here. The main consideration is this thing. So if you regard that interest rates are unchanged, so the end result is this one. Mm -hmm. The end result is you long the long and you short the short. So I buy this one. It is your payoff. It is Yes, that's why there's a negative sign here. You see? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ah, no, 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 no. No, no, because it's D. I'm sorry, this one is equal to zero. You nearly had me there. D1M is just for decoration. There is no D1M because there is no dividend paid in this period. Okay? What do you mean? No, this is what you go long. This is what you go short. You agree? So when you add them together, so you are long this one, you are short this one. So, I'm sorry, it's so early in the morning. You long this one, don't you? You long this one, you short this one. Uh, no, but I, but down here, it is still correct. 
I'm long, all I've done, oh, oops, shit. All I've done is I have taken this one, I've transplanted it here. Where, where is the error? Where's the mistake? Yeah. Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not actually concerned with you. You agree that this is how you would price a, a futures contract, yeah? So all I'm doing is I'm. I am saying if this is the price of the two month, and this is the price of the one month, then this has to be the price of long two month, short one month. That's all. Yeah, don't don't think you are you are you are several steps ahead of me, and you are thinking about the accounting and the operational and the cash flows. I'm thinking none of that. I'm simply adding. I know there's there's something called A. I know there's something called B. I am just adding A and B. Okay, and. Um, So is this okay? Is there are no, there, there are no no mistakes here. Like I said, this one is this one doesn't exist. Okay. Now my point to you, my point to you is simply this. So when you trade a calendar spread, assuming that these are just you know supporting acts, they're not really the main players. When you trade a futures calendar spread, you are basically taking a view on the dividend. And if the dividend go, if, okay, now notice there's a minus sign in front of it, okay? So that means if you trade, if you take this trade, if you trade like this, if you long the futures row, okay, and if dividend goes up because there's a minus sign, okay, your PL will go down. But if dividend goes down, your PL will go up. At the moment, like I said, there is actually a market price for this, which is 150. Where does that come from? Well, I told you. So there is a market expectation. Now, you are free to disagree with the market. That's what trading is all about. If you agree with it, there's nothing to do, okay? So you can disagree with the market and you can say, well, I don't think it's gonna be 150, okay? And then, then what? Then you do this trade. Maybe you think it's gonna be one and not 150. And if you were right, and if the if next week the market starts adjusting so that this D2M is no longer priced at 150, but it's now priced at one dollar, well, you know what? You have made 50 cents. Plus this part is what we call You've heard of this before, I think, positive carry. It's positive carry because the two-month interest rate, if it's 12% per annum, then two months, you actually get, you know, you get 2%, but one month, you only pay 1%. So actually, on a net basis, there's money in your pocket for this part. Is everyone still okay? Yeah. P and L, profit and loss. Yeah, sorry, profit and loss. P and L. Yeah. Um, is everyone okay so far? Um, now let me go further. So this means, so like I said, so when you are long the futures roll, 
you are long the interest differential. What is what is that? You are long this one, and you are short the dividend. That's exactly what I'm trying to say here. Okay. So I think I I, I restate the equation again. So here you go. Okay. So you are you you can even if you really want you can do this. You can you can actually split them up. So you long the interest rate gap between the two month and the one month, or the long and the short. So you long this one and you are short this one. Yeah. Is everyone still okay? This is real trading. People really do that. Okay. And you make money if what you long goes up or what you short goes down. In other words, to talk in plain English, if the market thinks that, so this is now, this is one month, this is two months, if the market thinks that in 45 days, a $1.50 dividend will be paid and you disagree with it, you think, no, it's not going to be 150. It's going to be 50 cents, okay? You can make a look. Maybe you have insider info. Who knows? Okay, but you're not supposed to trade on that, okay? So it's illegal. I'll just make an example. Maybe you have special insights, okay? You have special insights that the dividend is going to be less, less than $1.50. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah? Now, uh, so how do you make money? So I put together the two formulas, just like before, and a dividend. So I, now I've I taken out this D1M because, like I said, it, there is nothing there. Okay? And... Um, I want to tell you a real example, which is a very interesting one, okay? And it is, in fact, related to um, one of these cases, this one. Now, you all know Sokgen, right? The French bank. Uh, this is a story. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly when when this happened. Um, so Jerome Curbio was a trader in Sokgen. Uh, I think he was in the credit derivative department, if I remember correctly, and he actually went to jail for unauthorized trading and fraud. And um, he lost 5 billion euros in, year, in the year 2008. Now that's a lot of money. We used to joke about this uh, when, I was, when I was on the trading desk. We, the joke was, how did this guy lose 5 billion euros? You gotta work really hard to lose 5 billion euros. Don't you, don't you think? I, I find that quite hard, okay? Um, now, when did this, when did this happen? Um, by the way, this case is still unchosen, if I remember correctly, so feel free to pick on this one. I think it was the start of uh, okay, the start of two thousand and eight. Okay, when the bank discovered that uh, something seriously was wrong. Okay, so think uh, January. January 2018, 21st of January 2018. Now, I want to tell you a little story. 
about this case, which is actually related to what we've been discussing. So think of this date, January, let's just write that down, 21st, 2018. Think of that as your little T, your time now, okay? And what happened was there was a futures contract on the uh, on the CAC. You know that that is the, the the French stock market index, the CAC 30. There are only 30 stocks in there, and SoftGen was one of them. And let me tell you the story like this. So let's say before before this uh, this incident was discovered, uh, the spot price. Now I'm going to keep it simple. Let's just make it one thousand, okay? So there was a one month contract on the CAC, which will be. 1,000 plus, and let's just say interest rate was 12%. These are not important items, okay? The, the point I want to demonstrate to you is coming up. So the spot price is 1,000 plus, uh, so one month interest, if it's 12% per annum, is 1%, so that's another 10 bucks, okay? So the two month, the two month, would be 1,000, I'm just translating this equation here, plus 20 bucks, minus a dividend. Now, at the time, before this uh, trading disaster was discovered, so the market was pricing in a dividend of some sort. Let's just say, uh, 2% or 2.5%. So this is the dividend. Is everyone okay so far? Yeah? So you got the CAC 30, and on January 21st, this is a little T, January 21st, and in the one month, that'll be February 21st, And then the two month, March 21st. Now, as it happens, SoftGen was supposed, supposed to pay a dividend here. So somewhere around uh, maybe March the 5th or something. And they were the only company in that index that was due to pay a dividend in this period, between month one and month two, okay? And then, and then they announced, oh, we have a disaster here, okay? And then the whole index actually dropped. The whole, in the, the index, I don't know, it, it dropped a lot, okay? Maybe, let's just say it dropped 15%, okay? So now what is the new price? 850, because it's dropped 15%. Okay, so the spot price has gone from 1,000 to 850. So now you need to reprice it. So the new price would be F1 is 850 and F2 is 850 plus 20 minus 25. Now, here's the thing. So the market really, the market reacted like that. And it stayed like that for a number of days. So the only thing that was changing was that this 1,000 dropped to 850, maybe it went to 820, back to 870, down to 800. But this didn't change. This didn't change. And most important of all, this didn't change. 
So some traders, and a friend of mine was one of them, they started talking. They said, hold on a second. SockGen has just suffered one of the most catastrophic losses in their company history and in the history of French banking. No way they can pay a dividend in the next period. Okay. So they started betting against them by doing exactly what I just told you, which is long the long the futures roll. Now, when do you do a long futures roll? Is when you expect the dividend to be lower than what the market is pricing in. I said when the dividend goes down, your profit will go up. And they did exactly that. And they just keep buying and buying and buying and buying until the rest of the market start to realize what's going on. By that time, it's already too late. And they made a lot of money. You see, you see the point? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is, um, this is a real story uh, of how you can not only trade uh, a calendar spread, but you can you essentially you can make you can use that to take a view on on dividend. Okay. Um, now, I want to now switch to um, a different topic and talk a little bit about. Um, option markets, okay? And uh, actually, what, I, what I'm going to say to you has some similarity to what we have been discussing. So you know that when you price an option, the inputs required, this, this is a standard interview question, by the way, for that people ask candidates. One of the inputs that are needed. We ask it all the time. Um, the inputs that are needed to find an option. If one day I pick up the phone and I give you a phone call at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning, you should still be able to tell me. Okay. Um, so the stock price, the price rise, interest rate. Dividend yield, volatility. Now, the last, the first three are boring because you can observe them in the market. The last two are interesting. Now, dividend yield, we already spent quite some time talking about that. And like I said to you, at most times, unless you actually know what it is, it is actually a guess by the market. Volatility, so where does dividend yield come from? We already talked about that. What does volatility mean? Now, you see that all the time, and I'm going to show you one of our old friends. Um, so option price, option price, oops, option price dot com. Option prices. Okay. Um, what's the name of that website? Option pricer. Ah, there's a hy there's a hyphen. Sorry. Now this is our old friend. You're gonna see that a lot. Um, oh, you know what? I would fail my interview as a candidate. 
I forgot one very important element, the tenor. Okay. Um, so you see there's a so underlying price is the spot price, exercise price is the strike price, how long it is, 30 days, interest rate. Now dividend yield, we, we spend a lot of time talking about it. Just simply remember that this is actually quite often an unknown unless in between the time of your pricing and expiry there is a dividend paid and you know what it is because they have made an announcement otherwise it is a guess okay that's the whole, that's the whole point about this now what is volatility without going into all the complex mathematics what is the intuition behind volatility the intuition is this when you price options notice that you know the interesting thing is this one you can observe in the market exercise price is given tenor is tenor interest rate you can observe dividend yield sometimes you know sometimes you don't but sometimes you do after they announce it. Now volatility, that's an interesting one. What is it? <clears throat> Very good. Now, let's say this is time. It is implied, you're right. And this is the price of something, a stock price, stock price, okay? Whatever you wanna look at. So like, right now you are here. This is little t, and you are trying to price an option which is one month away. Now, that volatility parameter, 25, that's the default. You can change it to whatever you want, 18 point, you know, 653. You can, you can put whatever you want, but that parameter, is actually your estimation what would happen to the price within the next month. Now, if you know just a little bit about statistics and probability, so when you are doing random random number generation using a normal distribution, what, what actually are you doing? What you're doing is you say, well, most of the time it'll be somewhere here, Okay, so you have a you have an expected value, and you have a uh, you have a sigma, you have a standard deviation. Okay, and from that, you you come up with what you think is likely to happen in one month's time, in the way of a bell curve. So it's likely to be here. We don't know. It's, we think it's likely to be here. And by the way, from this point to this point, so there is a drift. So it's now coming back to you. So this drift is the same drift that we talked about in uh, with you know Professor Fong, you know, the drift and the martingale and all that. Okay, but don't worry about that for now. So if you look at a really really good old fashioned boring company. What's a really boring company? MTR is a really boring company. The 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 uh, the, the railway, okay. Uh, something like um, China Light and Power, which is the reason why we have lights, okay. Utilities. These are very boring companies. Now, boring. I'm. I'm not saying it's bad. Boring can be good. Okay. Compare that with something like Amazon or Baidu or Apple. Oh my God. If I was to ask you, which one do you think has a higher volatility? 
what would you say? Group one and group two. Group two has a much higher. Now, what is this parameter you put in here? Volatility. Ladies and gentlemen, it is actually this so-called sigma. Okay. Now, when you price options, what you actually see, if you go to the option market, and here I have an example, this is a screen from Bloomberg. Um, this is a page of option prices on Apple, but it's some years ago. So the stock price is around six hundred and ten dollars. It has stock splits in there, but you can see that. Uh, okay, how do you read something like this? So first of all, the stock price is the most important thing. The stock price is around six hundred and ten. Number one. Number two, there are different maturity dates. 19th of May, 16th of June, so this is like on a monthly basis. And then you have calls, you have puts, and you have different strikes. Okay. But the one thing I want to, uh, or the, the two things I want to impress upon you, first of all, there are prices. So options are actually traded in prices. So these are the option prices, 24.40, big, 24.75 offered. Now, here, this is the implied, the so-called implied volatility, 31.75. Yeah. Where does this come from? This comes from, this comes from, if you, yeah, if you put in all the relevant parameters, and you put 31.75 here, okay, and you hit calculate, you will get the option price, that $24 something. But if I put $24 here, and I try to solve for what this is, I should get back 31.75. That's why it's called implied volatility. So you get, you put in the volatility, you get the price. You put in the price, you try to get back the volatility, you, or you imply, you know, there is a there is a volatility implied by the market price. Okay, is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Um, okay. Now, if you are, I got a couple of questions here. So, if you buy or sell an option. So you pay or receive a premium and nothing happens to the market at all. So the price, the spot price doesn't move. It just stays in a, as a flat line. What would happen to the option price? And a follow on question is if you buy or sell an option, so you pay or receive a premium, what actually do you want to see happen to the market? Okay, now these are these are relevant questions to think of, and it's actually very easy to answer. And I take you to our old friend, uh, optionprice.com, and I'm going to price something where the underlying price is a hundred and the exercise price or the strike price is also 100. What do you call an option like that? At the money, thank you, yeah. And I'm gonna price it for, let's say, 60 days. Interest rate doesn't matter, I'll just leave it. Volatility, oh, I'll just leave it. Okay, I'm just gonna hit calculate. Now, you can see on the, on the right-hand side, uh, there is a price for call, which is five dollar forty four. There's a price for a put, which is four seventy eight. I'll just focus on the call. Okay, I, we don't have to worry about the put. Five forty four. So all I'm asking you is, if nothing happens, and I simply fast forward one day from sixty days to fifty nine days. What happens to the price now? 
it will be lower. 539, keep going. Five thirty-four. Well, how about I fast forward with thirty days? Much lower, thank you. Three seventy-eight. How about twenty days? Three oh seven. I'm I'm getting to that. So ten days. I don't know if you can actually put zero. I think this this might blow up. Um, whoops, <laughs> shit, I wasn't, I just thought it might, I did, okay, zero, 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 one, okay, so that's tiny, tiny, it's basically worth nothing, okay, it's worth nothing because your option is at the money, and there's so little time left, now, you need to understand that when we write uh, option payoffs, so this is a classic call option payoff, and this is a strike. So at maturity, it really looks like this. But I just showed you just now that for an add the money option, 60 days or 50 days and 30 days, 20 days, 10 days, the price is, is gradually dropping. And if you want to draw the payoff diagram, so at maturity, like I said, is a straight line, but before maturity, it actually kind of look, looks like this. It's very hard to draw these ones, okay? Yes, these are, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. These are actually what's called time value, okay? Now, the best way for me to demo on that is, in fact, I have a slide here talking about exactly that. Um, so just to, dr to drive that point home, at maturity, your payoff would look like the straight line, but prior to that is actually some kind of a curve, like the one on top. And I want to show you a pretty cool, a pretty cool looking um, little gadget which makes exactly that point, okay? Now here I have um, the Black Shows model, so you can see that there's the strike price. There's the, uh, I think it's assuming that the this current stock price is at 100. assuming that the spot is 100. So interest rate, dividend yield, these don't really matter. Uh, volatility, time to maturity. Now, when a time to maturity is very short, so like I said, oops, yeah, you got a straight line. So everyone is okay with that. But as you increase the time to maturity, it is actually a curve, okay? The difference between this and what I was showing you here is that here I can't move that curve, but here I can, okay? So as your time to maturity goes down, your curve wants to come back down to earth and start hugging the straight line. Are you with me? Yeah? Now, you actually can play around with this and you can ask yourself, well, what happens to a call price when interest rates changes. Okay, let me ask you this. Intuitively, intuitively, when interest rates go up 
and nothing else changes, what do you think will happen to the coal price? Hmm? Goes down? Who says goes down? Who says goes up? Who doesn't understand the question? Who doesn't care? All right. Now, before I even show you, my, 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 my intuition is this. So I already told you the forward is equal to SID. SID with a minus sign, okay? So when this, when this goes up, this will go up. So you imagine if the spot price was 100 and the interest rate was 1%, so you add one to, to this, okay? Don't forget about the dividend, so 101. So suddenly interest rate is now 10%. It's gonna be 110. Now option prices are based on where they think the forward would be, okay? So the higher the forward, you know, the higher the option, the, the, uh, the call price would be. For puts, it's the, the exact opposite. So as I, as I move the interest rate to the right-hand side, I think the curve will start shifting up a little bit, but it should be noticeable. Can you see that? Yes. Not a lot, but you can notice it, kind of notice it, okay? Now, dividend yield is, is the opposite. So when this goes up, the price will come down. Yeah? Volatility. If volatility, now this is implied volatility, okay? When volatility goes up, what happens to the price? It goes up, right? Now, one, one important thing that I want you to remember before you leave is that when you price options and you say volatility, okay, it is the forward looking. This is in the future. So now, this is now. It's the forward looking, so it is not I repeat, it is not looking at the volatility here, although people often use that as a reference, okay? But I think it's of questionable value. We are not talking about historical. We are talking about implied vol in the future. Okay? All right, now, so what have we uh, talked about so far today? So we talked about, um, where did we start? Ah, yeah, we, we, we had a review of what happened last night. And I told you a little bit about how markets work, the bids and the offers, how they line up, how markets clear. Um, we discuss uh, futures calendar spread trading, sometimes called futures roll. And I shared with you an example on SoftGen, which was a real case. And we talked a little bit about option market inputs. Again, please remember the last two are by far the more interesting ones, especially the last one, okay? And I showed you the option payoff, how there is a straight line at maturity, but it, can, it should be a curve before that, and how you can imply volatility from option prices, okay? I think I'm gonna stop here. We need to go downstairs. Upstairs, downstairs upstairs okay so um if you haven't signed in yet uh please do so okay i might not be able to answer your questions now because i also have to rush upstairs okay so let's all pack up and um and go to uh capital markets okay thanks everyone uh, so uh oh yeah and a reminder that um please look at the schedule for the the next tutorial okay and uh, if I can just have my dollars back. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you.